What's going on Dividend Chasers? It's Dividend Bloodhound here with another investing episode. In this episode we're going to talk about three undervalued German stocks available on Trading212 and of course from the German Stock Exchange. Hopefully these will bring you some value. They are a mixture of uh, growth stocks and dividend paying stocks. Some have cut their dividends at the moment because that's the nature of what we're dealing with right now uh, due to the health crisis. However, they are at a significant discount right now, but are all due to return at some point to their original stock price in the long term. And that is obviously really good in terms of getting a dividend. The ones that do pay a dividend, you can really ramp up the yield that you get from them and then make some appreciation out of them as well in terms of the share price. And the growth stocks themselves, where they may return a dividend eventually they may not um, you can gain not just the appreciation out of them but you'll then gain a dividend that you no no longer originally receiving but then will go on to receive in the near future and you'll get that from the very start point and you can sit on that and hopefully have that grow over time as the company returns to health and returns to normal that being said we're going to get straight into the video in a second and have a look at these three very powerful, very large companies. I'm just going to quickly say to the uh, to, to the new guys here: if you're new to if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button in the corner on the Dividend Bloodhound. It's a pleasure to meet you, and it'd be great if you hit the notification bell as well. If this video does bring you some value, and you actually really do like what you what you see, and you're going to consider investing, please do your own research as well. I have to I have to say that because I'm not a financial advisor. But do, um, do, do hit that like button if this video helps you in any way at all. That would be great for me and be great for the channel. Without further ado, let's get in there and let's have a look at our first company. Our first company is Basef. Or, and we will get in there right now and have a look. Catch you in there. What's going on again guys? Welcome to the analysis part of this video. As I said, this first company is called Basif. Uh, German based, huge, huge chemical company making materials and chemicals across several industries for several sectors across nutrition and care and agriculture. Uh, very, very, very sought after and well thought of company. Its ticker is BAS. Its ticker is BAS. It has a market cap of 46 billion euros, a PE ratio of 15.49, revenue as near as makes no difference 60 billion, EPS of 3 euros 24, and a nice healthy dividend yield of 6.48%, which is quite big indeed, as you will probably agree. They have a net income of 8.42 billion and a profit margin of 14.2%, which is pretty good. Uh, and a debt to assets ratio of 52%, which means in these times of crisis, they aren't massively in debt outside of the re remit of the company, of what the company owns. They have a three year, uh, excuse me while that, doesn't work. <laughs> um, they have a three-year growth rate of three-year dividend growth rate of three percent, which isn't enormous, but it is some growth, which is always good, especially if you get in at the price that you've got at the moment. And they have a five-year revenue growth of one percent, but slightly concerning. We have revenue growth of three years of minus four percent, which is slightly reflectant of where the share price is at the moment, as well as the health crisis. Currently trading at 51 euros a share. In the last year though, it has peaked at 71 euros at the end of 2019. And before the crisis sort of properly take, took hold, it was at 63 euros a share. And it has been nearly back to that recently before settling back down at the 51 mark. And at the peak of the crisis, you could have picked this one up for 38 euros a share which would have been a real bargain and would have boosted your yield considerably had you got in at that price even at the moment though i consider this company to be a 
to be a buy in my opinion and for myself and I'm looking to add this to my portfolio in the near term in the next few weeks or months or so. Very pleased to have brought you this company and I will catch you back out in the outside world. Welcome back to the real world again guys. Yeah, first stock there then was Basef, the chemical company. Really strong dividend payer, still paying its dividend at this time. Uh, the dividend is slightly slow growing, it's not exactly growing with inflation at the moment. However, it is still being paid and it is at 6% anyway, so that in itself is beating inflation and will continue to do so as long as they keep paying it. As we've seen there with their profit margins, their debt ratio and their revenue and net income, they are in no danger of not being able to pay this dividend at the moment, even with the health crisis. And they've probably actually had an uptick in their sales due to the health crisis because of all the chemicals and glass and rubber and plastics that are involved in dealing with the crisis that we have the, on our hands at the moment. That being said, I rate it personally for myself as a buy. Please do your own research before you come to the same conclusion as me. I'd never want to uh, see anybody off, so to speak, but yeah, definitely do your own research as well as having a look at other people's research as well. That will massively help you out. Anyway, moving on to the next company, we have, <laughs> drum roll please, we have Adidas, a completely, different, a completely different company to the one that I've just spoken about. Everybody's always on about Nike over in America being how, how great that's been with its stock splits and the money that it makes and the, its actual branding. But nobody actually sort of talks about Adidas despite the fact that it is an absolutely brilliant brand and it is almost like a little brother to Nike in its popularity across the world. With that being said, it is also owns so a, a number of different brands, so it owns Solomon, uh, the ski equipment, so it's like diversified into that field as well. You don't see many people wearing Adidas skiing jackets, but you will see them wearing Solomon ski jackets and using Solomon boots and skis. That is all owned by Adidas. That being said, that's just a little detail there that I that I, I sniffed out when I went doing my research. But let's actually get in and have a look at the fundamentals of this pretty good company. Catch you in there. What's going on again guys? Welcome back into the analysis part of this video. And as aforementioned, we have we have Adidas, the competitor to Nike in the sporting world. They have a huge portfolio of products that they offer. They've got, as I've already mentioned, the skiing side of things. You see all the athletes wearing their clothes at the Olympics and then you see people walking around the street in Adidas trainers and Adidas clothing as well. Huge, huge company, globalised to the absolute max. Uh, and let's have a look at a, a few fundamentals. So we have, the ticker is ADS. They have a market cap of 47.62 billion, a P ratio of 23.18, Revenue of 23.64 billion, EPS of 10 euros 25, no dividend yield at the moment because that has been cut due to the health crisis, which makes total sense right now to reserve the, and preserve the money that the company has. As you can see, it made a net income there of 1.98 billion and a profit margin of less than 10%, which isn't brilliant, but a profit margin is a margin nonetheless and a debt to assets ratio of 67%, which is creeping up a little bit, but comfortably below the 100% where alarm bells would start ringing for a lot of investors. There's no dividend to report for uh, these guys. No dividend to report for these guys really, but what we can do is have a look at some of their growth ratios. So if we have a little look in here at their, uh, at their growth, uh, Adidas's growth, we have revenue growth of 10% in the last three years and 8.5% over the last five, which is pretty good, just shy of double digit growth, which is absolutely great. One thing I would say for this one for me is like it is missing a dividend, so that's a problem for my investing. However, there is a significant margin in this company, as we can see over the last 12 months here. It, peaked at 315 euros a share 
on the 15th of Jan this year and then it collapsed all the way down to uh, 168 a share so almost halved basically uh, almost overnight as well if you'd have gotten at this point you would made you'd make a significant return however it has slightly recovered since then and we're currently nestled at 239 but there's still a significant growth margin in that for you over the long term as people return back to normal and no people can't go and buy adidas products off the high street but they can certainly still order them online and that is definitely something that i imagine has still happened over the breadth of this crisis as people have got bored at home they've probably started treating themselves to some started treating themselves to something to keep them occupied or some running shoes because they want to keep up with their fitness really really good company i really like the look of this in just purely in terms of the appreciation, let alone when their dividend returns. Uh, and I'm seriously considering this for my portfolio over the longer term. Not going to buy it in the next few weeks or so, but it is certainly, certainly up there and will remain definitely on my watch list. That being said, I'm going to wrap up there for this segment of the video and I'll see you back in the outside world. What's going on again, guys? Welcome back to the real world. Adidas there then, absolutely fantastic company by the look of it. Really good fundamentals, know there isn't a dividend at the moment because they've elected to cut it to preserve their cash to survive the crisis. They still have a significant revenue stream with online sales, uh, bulking up what, what's left from the people not being able to buy it on the high street. But as we come out of the other side of this really bad crisis obviously, uh, the demand will further return to their product and when people start being able to go skiing again the Olympics get on and the advertising picks back up I am absolutely up, have no doubt that the share price will continue to appreciate back towards where it was definitely one for me to watch for the long term and maybe you will look at it yourself now last but not least our final company to look at is Deutsch Euroshop and this is a company that specializes and deals in commercial property and the holding of retail properties such as uh, malls where you can go and buy stuff in person obviously you know shopping centers you know the like of this sort of thing obviously at the moment this company has been beaten up because of exactly the same thing you guessed it nobody can go out shopping right now so there's a little bit of apprehension about where this company's income is going to come from because nobody's using the shops so the shops can't pay their rent and the cycle continues however they are negotiating with each other to keep revenue coming in so it's not in euro shops interest to to see off the client and make them go bankrupt because then they won't have a client in the store so they they will negotiate some sort of agreement that's in the interest of both parties to keep revenue flowing. That being said, let's actually get in there, have a look at the fundamentals. There was definitely a significant margin in this one as well. Let's have a look and I'll catch you in there. Hello again, guys. Welcome back to the next part of this video. As you can see here on the charts, uh, Deutsche Euroshop has taken a significant hit due to you know what. Sorry to sound like I'm referring to Lord Voldemort now, but everybody seems to know what this, what's going on now. So um, I'm, I can't mention it, but it's really obvious what it is. Obviously, as we know, this is as I've already mentioned, this company owns retail centres and shopping malls in multiple cities across Germany. Uh, their ticker is DEQ. They have a market cap of 834 million, a PE ratio of 7.43, revenue of 226 million, an EPS of 1.82 euros per share, no dividend because of surprise, surprise. Um, and they have a profit margin of 50% usually, a net income of 126 million, which is really, really good. They managed to keep half of their revenue which is absolutely excellent and a debt to assets ratio of also 50 percent so they that is quite a low debt ratio to have which is really good core fundamentals they also have 
a they also have a revenue growth over the last five years of four percent which isn't excellent but it's not bad the concerning thing is it has dropped recently over the last three years down one percent when you have a look at the debt ratio that isn't a huge concern for me they have no dividend at the moment because of obvious reasons and they're a bit like British land over here in the UK in that respect where they've just cut the dividend to, to focus on making sure that they can keep their suppliers keep their clients in their positions where they are and then they can come out of it afterwards anyway let's have a look where they where they're at price rise so currently you can pick up a share for 13 euros 43 you couldn't have done too much better really you could have got it for 10 euros peak crisis uh, and then pre-crisis the peak for the last year was 26 euros so there's a really really big margin in this one you're just gonna have to be patient as we work towards the longer term uh, release from what we are experiencing right now uh, and that price should see a climb back towards where we expected to find them before it all kicked off and that of course means that there is a significant margin for yourselves in that as well a chance to make a decent amount of money on your return on investment if you're patient and then have the dividends return as well that being said i'm going to wrap up there and i'll see you back in the outside world What's going on again guys? Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. That was Deutsch Euro Shop there, a decent, well-founded, well-grounded real estate company over in Germany. That's significantly discounted right now. It's also one that I'm watching for the longer term. Doesn't seem to have leaked back up in share price yet, so there is an opportunity to get in there still. I'm going to keep an eye on this one and hopefully find some money to, reinv to reinvest invest in it in the longer term but i definitely like the look of this company especially its low debt ratio and high profit margin that being said thank you very much for sticking around to the end of this video really appreciate uh, you staying and having the willpower to do so thanks for supporting the channel if you haven't already please hit that like button in the corner that would be fantastic and if you're brand new here the subscribe button is there you've come this far you might as well click it and hit the notification bell as well and then that way you'll get notified when i release more stock picks like this and that's a big win for everybody hopefully helping numerous people out thank you very much for watching again guys hope you enjoyed the video it's a pleasure to make and i'll catch you in my next episode see you later bye bye